So basically, James Blake had a few things that he said on Twitter that went supremely viral in which he was expressing just how unfair the payment system is for streaming, how not sustainable it is. Some of his gripes with artists who have to turn into content creators, dedicate more time to content creation than the actual craft. These were things that a lot of us echoed. In the midst of this, it reached all kinds of different people in the industry, influential people in that industry. Kanye West being one of them who's been debating about whether or not he wants to take his own out album off of streaming or not presented to streaming with uh, Vultures 2. In the midst of this, he teased that he had a solution. The solution being a, not an app, but a website called Vault. Now, Vault is a subscription-based service that I think you can set the price. Right now, he seems to be the only person that is using it. I guess he's kind of testing it out in public. But you sign up for a subscription with your favorite artists and you get unreleased music on the back end. You have opportunities to communicate directly with your fan base. And somebody brilliantly put it on Twitter. They were like, this just sounds like Patreon with a Discord integration. Or it sounds like Bandcamp because Bandcamp has these features as well. Or some of the newer ones like Even. So this was his solution and he was very open about this being the early stages of his company. And I think he even referenced in his DM with me, he was like, you know, Spotify even had to start somewhere. And I'm like, I get that. But we're supposed to be skeptical because we understand like things are changing really quickly for independence. And it's really easy to get turned. It's really easy to go right back down the same path or trying to get away from. Right. Well, OK, so then if we integrate our conversations recently all about DSPs and distributors, right? And specifically the middlemen uh, mm -hmm. to getting your music onto music platforms. And I had this conversation with someone who is an owner of a music distribution company and just talking about the problems, talking about problems with TuneCore, what we've been you know, discussing, terms of use, things like that. Just talking about, well, what's the solution here? Like who's going to be the hero? And I go, you know, at the end of the day, while artists have to go through distributors to, get to, to play the game and have the music on music platforms if that's what they want to do, mm -hmm. right? And we'll have a conversation about the anti-streaming <laughs> war, <laughs> direct to consumer thing. But you know, what would it take to have someone really step up and to be, a, to be set apart from anyone else? And I just go, you know, for me, I just go little things. Like if there were resources to help artists and you go as the music distributor, we're going to help you. We're going to take a fee, but by being on our platform, we're going to give you access to contract templates. We're going to help you to understand how to register your copyrights. Like someone who would step up to help in a more meaningful way, I feel mm -hmm. could be a game changer. They could be someone who really could more meaningfully be like, we're for the artist. Cause how are you right. for the artist otherwise? But right. you know, uh, back to you and your thoughts on just basically these middlemen, I mean, do you think we need to just abolish all the middlemen? We just don't need not, them at all? Not necessarily. I think we should do as these companies do themselves, right? When you look at, for instance, uh, I want to say it was Nintendo that pulled out of the E3 conference before it got canceled. I think they discontinued even doing the E3 conference, which is a conference that brings together all kind of video gaming companies, all kind of video game enthusiasts, kind of like a trade show to a certain degree. People come there and they congregate. They see the newest things that are from these different uh, video game companies. Nintendo got to the point, I believe, uh, I believe it was Nintendo, that what they said, first of all, we know that we're in a different economy right now where we got to look at what's really worth our time, what's really worth the money we're investing into it. And they decided, you know what, we're not going to go to E3. We're going to start our own conference and go directly to our consumers. So when you see companies at that level doing that, you have to ask yourself, what other companies are doing that? Amazon, you know, when you go look for batteries, the first thing you're going to see is not a Duracell or Energizer. You're going to see Amazon Basics. You go to a Trader Joe's. You don't see an abundance of other brands. You see a, you see the majority of Trader Joe type products and they're really good. And these, these things go viral on their own because they're delicious meals. Shout out to my wife. But um, with that said, when you see as they do, you start to realize that is just the direction things are going. And it's for many different, it's a myriad of reasons. But what I look at it as, I don't think there is a necessity for any of these companies to come in and be the savior, because I think that in order for that to be a possibility, a beginner has to be designed the same way as an artist, in my opinion, and their business model has to be designed very similar to an advanced independent artist. And that just on paper doesn't make any sense. For instance, if you are a beginning artist who doesn't have a website, don't know how to set up a landing page. Websites like Banzoogle or Bandcamp are ideal because they kind of set the template there for you. It's it's very little friction in terms of you going live or what you're doing. But if you're someone who already has your own website, it's like a Shopify, 
and you're aware that for a few extra dollars, you can have an audio player on your website and integrate that in, into what you're doing, you may not have a necessity for a new product that pops up and says, hey, dedicate your energy to this subscription service, even though you can do it on your own website, dedicate all your energy to my subscription service, push the link, which at the end of the day, you're really becoming sort of an affiliate, unofficial affiliate for the website. Is that really worth all of the energy and the time that you dedicate to creating the music, to rolling out the content, going through all these steps just so that you can give that hard work and the results of that to another company that ultimately most of these companies end up getting bought out. And once it looks good on paper and they say, hey, we've got 12,000 members that are all paying this amount to use our service and they get sold off. We've seen it before within the policy change. It happened with SoundCloud, where once they build up their community based upon music that was kind of a wild, wild west, they started striking down accounts like mine that were a part of the growth of their platform. Once they started signing licensing deals and things that kind of made it a conflict of interest, they got rid of those people after they helped build up the company with no equity. So I look at that and I'm like, let's not do the same thing. I, I remember during the pandemic, so many people did this with Clubhouse. They gave Clubhouse so much energy, so many arguments where public people were repurposing it. And then they went and sold it off. <laughs> so it's like, how many times can this happen before you recognize that I'm not being treated as a partner, I'm being treated as a pawn. Ever dream of getting your music into TV, film, and games? Well, it's easier than you think. And here's what I've put together for you. A music library database of 90 plus music libraries, email templates, and a license agreement all so it's done for you. Go to topmusicattorney.com for sync licensing made easy. No, and I think you make a great point there. So let's talk about it just as far as the entire system, right? Music business in general. Mm -hmm. The artist is the baseline. The musician is the baseline of everything else that happens. But the game is rigged in that everyone comes along and wants a piece of it. Sure. Managers come along. They want their 20%. Agents come along. So they're all taking a piece of the pie. The idea is that we're trying to work collaboratively. So mm -hmm. we should all be putting in effort, making a piece of the pie. And same, you know, like labels come in. They're the partner. They take ownership of your stuff, right? right. You lose that ownership forever. You probably won't get paid. It's, all this stuff happens. And so... Squished down are the artists and musicians. But right. <laughs> even if you go to things like social media, sure. this idea of like, we work for Instagram, we work for YouTube. This is our day job, right? To even put up a YouTube video and hope it does well. And maybe we'll get paid from some of the advertisements that are put on it. At what point do we take a step back and we go, you know what? All my investment to build these platforms, they're not owned by me. I don't control my audience. I don't own my audience because these platforms could go away at any time. Sure. I don't have these email addresses. Right. I don't have phone numbers to get in touch with Curtis King so I can let him know about my, my, my new single. And so at what point do we just step back, not even in the micro of, ah, we were really angry at these music distributors because they're taking a piece and this is unfair mm -hmm. and they're forfeiting our royalties and this and that. And we go, really, every piece of this system is set up so we work for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, so that's, that's, a heavy, that's a heavy question. I, I think... There's a few different ways to address that, but inevitably it all comes down to money, I think. I think that it's funny how much criticism I'm sure that if I take the perspective of a major label, right, which I've been very critical of the way that they conduct their business, the way they treat their artists, that's the biggest concern of mine because I have friends that tell me stories of things that are currently happening, not things that happened 20 years ago that are currently happening that I'm like, oh, we're just, I'm just paying my dues, I'm playing the game. I try to look at it from their perspective in that I understand why they could care less or at least project the emotion that they care less about the criticism because all they got to do is go buy a share of whatever the independents are doing in protest of them. And you see it happen. You could invest into, let's start off with the Spotify, for instance. 70 cents of every dollar at the time that I researched this is already spoken for by the three major labels, Warner Music, Sony Music, and UMG. So with that 30%, there's a divvy up amongst the independents and the folks outside of that structure, as well as whatever overhead that they have for their business. When they have a hand in all of these different, when, when you have a, a, a Warner Music, a Sony or a UMG or having a hand in all aspects of different businesses, there's nothing for them to be a silent investor. For instance, a Spotify, a silent investor in a distro kid. No matter how the artist feels, how they rebel, 
I can find a way to have a piece of that. I haven't seen this, but what's to stop them from creating an app that you use only through Shopify that is bought by the folks who run these entities? So it's like at some point you kind of end up having to do business because we're just in that industry kind of uh, adjacent to them. I think that as long as you are the one that's in control of who you want to use as a third party plugin, third party website, as long as they're not trying to be the entire program, the entire platform of your business, if they are su in support of what you're doing, that's no different to me than Patreon using PayPal as their payment gateway. Right. Yeah, I'm sure that Patreon could handle all that business themselves, but it's a third party service that assists their business, uh, their business model in a convenient way. And maybe there's partnerships. So I look at it and say that it's not to me. Independence should not be about ego. And a lot of times it does kind of like blur the lines. It shouldn't be about ego and I need to own every single aspect of this. I look at it. I'll give you an example. I look at it like this. So many producers that I've met in L.A. specifically, shout out to Kenny Beats. When I met Kenny Beats very early on, before he was the Kenny Beats he is today, he was part of an EDM group called Loud Pack. And I remember going down there, he would rent a studio. It wasn't his studio. He would rent a studio. And he would conduct all kind of business out of there in terms of every artist that came to L.A., he would work with them here. I saw him six months later in another studio, then months later in his own studio. So utilizing these tools and having a plan for where your money is going and why your money is going there, keeping account of is this necessary, I think is our responsibility as business owners anyways. So I don't think musicians are any different. So I, th I think there are some quote unquote, middlemen services that are necessary, but um, there are some that are absolutely not necessary.